Hello everyone, this is JC Sorrell. Thank you for tuning in to this Nintendo Dad's review of Deep Sky Derelicts Definitive Edition for the Nintendo Switch. We'd like to thank publisher 1C Entertainment and developer Snowhound Games for providing us with a review code for this game. I won't keep you in suspense on this one. Deep Sky Derelicts is a fantastic game. It's one part tabletop board game, one part card game, one part RPG, one part roguelike, and one part dungeon crawler. Yeah, that's a lot of parts. It's dense and complicated to start, but once you crack through, you just can't put it down, not even for Animal Crossing. It's got that one more round element of all the best games. Deep Sky Derelicts is set in a dystopian future. You are a scavenger searching hulking old spaceships for clues that will lead you to a mythical mothership. Along the way, you encounter lots of aliens, robots, and rival scavengers who get in your way, and piles of trash and loot as well. You clear through enemies via turn-based battle, with your actions dependent on what cards you have in your hand. As you progress in the game, you collect new gear, which enhances your base stats and gives you more cards to use in battle. If you like maxing out stats or thinking about card game strategy, there's really no end to what you can do in this game. Set against all of this is a very limited energy supply. Everything you do in this game requires energy. Moving to a tile, it will cost you energy. Battling, every card you play costs energy. Mess up on one of the game's surprisingly good riddle puzzles, you might wind up having an NPC steal all of your energy. If you run out of energy, your life support systems fail and you start to take damage, unless you scrap loot you found for energy, or make it back to your ship and home base, where you can sell loot, upgrade your team, renew your energy stores, and get new quests. Each dungeon you explore is procedurally generated, so there is definitely replay value here. In fact, that portion is very much like Diablo, where you never encounter the same dungeon twice, and it has the same type of addicting loot system. As for your party, you can only have three individuals in your squad at any given time, and there are many more classes than that, so you could play through the game again and again with different groups if you wanted to try different strategies. The different class types are markedly different, and I had to shuffle my squad around until I found a balance that fit my playstyle. Even with this amount of replayability, I believe that a single playthrough would take 30 to 40 hours to beat on the campaign mode, so there's a lot of game here for you. The depth and intricacy of this game is intimidating, and that's my biggest concern. I'm so used to jumping into a game and having a thorough tutorial to walk me through all the game mechanics. That's noticeably absent here. Even after about 10 hours in, there are still mechanics I'm trying to figure out. Fortunately, there is an in-game codex that has an encyclopedia of most of the rules, but even reading through that all at one time is daunting. You also launch into the game by having to pick out a squad of three without any sort of background on the various advantages or disadvantages of the various squad members. I wish they had invested more into getting you up and running. This could just be me being a baby. I don't open a new tabletop board game and expect to know how to play without reading the instructions, and so you just need to go into this game with that mindset. Just know that you'll have a pretty steep learning curve. Having said that, I think the best way to start the game would be to try the arena mode, where you jump in with a squad, quickly get loot, and move through a much more streamlined dungeon crawl. I had many of my initial questions answered via this faster paced route, and I also got to learn more about the different classes. If you're picking up this game for the first time, I recommend starting there. What really takes this game to the next level is its fantastic sci-fi comic art style. Battling is so much fun as you watch the comic panels unfold, and there are so many different enemy types to consider, and they're all so well drawn. The board game-like tile exploration sequences don't give you a whole lot to look at, but I think the simplicity of that is both nostalgic for my love of board games and a nice foil to the more detailed art elsewhere in the game. Music is also perfect for the sci-fi setting. Deep Sky Derelict's Definitive Edition is available now on the Nintendo eShop, and if you enjoy board games, card games, dungeon crawlers, or loot collecting, I recommend picking up this game without reservation. Thanks for listening to this Nintendo Dad's review of Deep Sky Derelict's Definitive Edition. We hope you'll tune in to our flagship podcast, which airs Thursday evenings on YouTube and Twitch, and is also available on your favorite podcast players. Don't miss the other podcasts in the Nintendo Dads family too, such as Dads Crossing, covering Animal Crossing, The Dinner Table for an open chat about games, and Dads After Dark. Until next time!